the Saudi invitation to reconcile Iraqi differences and break the deadlock over forming a new government is welcomed by some and rejected by others. A genuine initiative to help Iraq or concern over Shia dominance and growing Iranian influence in Iraqi politics. This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Rida Fakhri. King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia has invited the leaders of Iraq's political blocs for talks in Riyadh aimed at breaking the deadlock over forming a new government. King Abdullah suggested they meet after the Hajj pilgrimage in November. Reaction from Baghdad has been swift, with some leaders cautioning against Saudi's involvement. Before we get into the details, let's take a quick look at why Iraq is in this position. The March 7th vote was inconclusive because no main party achieved an outright majority in parliament. Former Prime Minister Ayad Alawi leads al Iraqiya, a secular bloc which won the most seats, 91. Incumbent Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki follows close behind. His state of law alliance has 89 seats. This is a predominantly Shia alliance but also includes Sunni tribal leaders, Kurds and Christians. In third place is the Iraqi National Alliance. One of the prominent leaders in this is Muqtada al-Sadr. His Sadrist bloc has 40 of the 70 seats in this alliance. The Shia National Alliance of Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki said it did not need Saudi help because a new deal to form a government was close. There is an official statement by both the Kurdish Alliance and the National Alliance which expressed their appreciation to this initiative. But it also assured that the Iraqi entities are already nearing the formation of a government. There is already the initiative of Mr. Masoud Barazani. We must give the initiative a chance to succeed. But the country's Sunni-backed Iraqi bloc has welcomed the offer of all party talks. We must not forget that Iraq is an Arab country, a member of the Arab League. Arab countries do have a right to contribute, not as custodians, but as good offices, a table for negotiations for Iraqi politicians. And that is a good thing. It's better than the interference of non-Arab countries, which we hear no one objecting to. So why is it when an Arab country offers to help, we hear such voices, which unfortunately reflect a lack of awareness and disrespect to Iraqi Arabic and Islamic identity. Joining us now to discuss this latest initiative, our guests in Baghdad, Saad al-Muttalibi. He's an advisor to the Council of Ministers. In Amman, Muhammad al-Bayati, a member of the Iraqi National Movement, that's part of Ayad Alawi's al iraqiya list. And in London, Simon Tisdall. He's an assistant editor of the British newspaper, The Guardian. Mohanad al-Bayati, why is this Saudi initiative good news for Iraq? Um, first of all, I would say to, uh, hi to everybody and your guest and to you also in the audience. And uh, secondly, you asked me about the invitation of, from King Abdullah in Saudi. Uh, we welcome this issue because um, you, can, you can see the image or the image in the Iraq more than seven months till now. No one can make a move, a real move that can help all the files that the the, the general failure on all the, defi the files in Iraq as a state. But so, isn't this uh, foreign intervention, clear, though? Yes. Some say that the Kurdish uh, president, Masoud Barzani, is uh, conducting talks and that an agreement is possibly close at hand. Because till now in Iraq, the environment is not clear wi widely because. Uh, we believe that even Mr. Amar Hakim and Mr. Masoud Barazani are asking for the round table for all the political parties. And we welcomed all these invitations also in the, the Saudi, which came later and recently. But the, the main issue now is coming, coming from inside the other political parties. They insist for their uh, playing the role inside the Iraq. And we try to concession some uh, high-level demands for all the political parties until we reach a reasonable solution for new government to build a new Iraq or new states. Saad, Saad al-Mutallabi then. Issues. Well, the supporters of Nouri al-Maliki aren't so keen on this initiative, but the situation has festered for so long. Can a Saudi-driven uh, brokered agreement be better than no agreement at all? Uh, first, thank you, and uh, my best regards to your view to you, viewers, and your guests. Uh, as we welcome the uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's initiative, 
but we think it is too late. Uh, the objection is not that Saudi Arabia is interfering in this matter or uh, there is other issues that uh, uh, my good colleague Mr. Mohammed Al Bayati just referred to now. Uh, we don't see it, we don't look at it from this point of view. We think it is too late. Uh, now, today, this evening, all representatives of all political parties are meeting in an oval table. Now, it doesn't have to be around in a form of a table, and they are talking. But they've been and meeting for a long time. It's been place. almost eight months since the elections took that place. Is very Can true. Iraqis that find is very a solution true. to this by themselves without I'll any outside help? Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, and any foreign interference in this matter will add another layer of complications because it will add a regional view on the form of Iraqi government. That means there will be red lines, there will be uh, people uh, and non-Iraqis who would have red line on this particular party or that particular bloc or that person. So we believe that even that it took very long, unjustifiably long, but nevertheless, it is a matter for Iraqis to be resolved. And we can talk better between our, among ourselves. Simon Tisdall. And as I said, there is a very important meeting this evening. will take place. If you want, we can talk about it. And I can, can well, give ask, you a rundown Simon, of all events. Let me ask Simon Tisdall about this. Uh, he's in London. If Iraq is indeed the democracy some would have us believe, should the Iraqi institutions rise up to the occasion and handle this crisis? There is a constitutional council. There is a Supreme Court. There are meetings underway. Or, or does Iraq still need an outside push to help to help it along in its uh, internal problems well good afternoon from London I, I do agree with the two previous speakers that if possible Iraq should sort out this problem itself there's been far too much foreign interference not just from the region but from further afield in Iraq in the last seven years and the last thing Iraqi people want is um, outsiders telling them how to run their country that said I think Iraq post-2003 still has to prove that it can run its own affairs independently without foreign help assistance or without foreign interference. That's a big challenge for all of Iraq's politicians. And I would say, uh, from the viewpoint of the ordinary Iraqi, seven months is far too long to sort this out. Um, ordinary Iraqis have a lot of pressing issues to do with ordinary standard of living and quality of life which need to be addressed by the government of that country. And I'm sure they're all fed up now watching this squabbling going on in Baghdad. It's gone on far too long and it needs to stop. Uh, Mohanad al bayati how, how does the picture look for you? You suggested earlier that it was a welcome decision for the Saudi Arabians to step in. After all, it is an Arab country trying to help. But wouldn't Saudi Arabia trying to mediate be tantamount to Iran doing the same? One will be accused of, of uh, furthering the Sunni agenda, just as the other will be uh, accused of trying to do the same for the Shias. So let me uh, just respond for some notes that I heard now about the, t the matter of time for Iraqi. I think we spent more than seven months till now. We didn't get any success with this issue. So I don't know why now we are trying hiding in the 24 or 48 hours just to solve all the problems suddenly. This is the issue we have to talk or think about. Uh, the but second I'm not so much issue, asking you about time. Suffering. I'm asking, yes. I'm asking you about the nature of the help. Yes, I know. Is it I know, okay I know, for the Saudi Arabians want to, to help when it isn't for the Iranians to do so? Yes, uh, just I, am, I want to make a note about this issue. Second issue about the Saudi Arabia. You know, now, till now we are suffering as, as Iraqis from the weakness of the rule of the Arab League or the Arab countries themselves with the balancing of the Iraqi interference uh, inside the Iraq. Now, it's clearly the Iranian role in Iraq and even the U.S. Uh, <coughs> general failure from 2003 till now. And we are suffering with an issue. We can uh, face this interfering in, until there is a real role for the Arab League to make an independent role for the Iraqis to control or run up their own selves by creating their new government in Iraq. Some of them parties in Iraq, they are still trying to follow up all the agendas from the ground because they think there, are, there is no any area for them to play a role without these agendas. Uh, we have a, a real mentality issues in Iraq to think, about, to think about the new future of Iraq, how we can start it. Many of them, they try to manipulate the, the policies of democracy, how do they apply it. Till now, we are, we are confusing or 
uh, which one we have to follow? Is that we have a model, special one for the Middle East democracy, different from the world, or what? Something like that. Even uh, now, when we're talking about uh, the time late or recently, about the invitation from King Saudi, but we need this because till now we have our problems, the real one. Till now, there is no any kind of spark of uh, movement to make any steps for the solutions. This is what we need. We need the uh, umbrella of Arab League. We need a clear environment that we can talk as Iraqis alone out of pressure of the regional effectiveness about. Uh, the interference inside the Iraq. Well, what kind of players are needed, Saad al mutallabi If this is to be a generally democratic process, should all major powers, be it regional powers like uh, Iran or Saudi Arabia, be excluded? Should the United States, a major uh, stakeholder as well, be excluded? What kind of countries should be involved? Uh, should there be smaller regional countries, perhaps Qatar, Oman, countries with good relations with all sides, trying to play a role in this? Um, well, um, unfortunately, I didn't understand much of the argument of Mr. Mohammed uh, Bayati. I mean, I heard it, but I couldn't make any sense of it, so I'm going to disregard it. Uh, as the, for your question, uh, ma'am, uh, uh, we refuse any type of interference. Uh, Mr. Joe Biden came uh, with uh, a host of uh, uh, proposals, and it was very clear to him that it's better, much better for him to leave the Iraqis uh, alone and let them resolve their issues, even that it is, it, it is taking unjustifiably very long time. Uh, the, we, re, yeah, we think that we are capable of resolving these issues. We are talking. The political map in Iraq is very complicated. It is very complicated and it requires a complex set of solutions. It is not an issue that could be resolved between two uh, political parties. We need the participation of everybody. Everybody has a, a set of agendas and requirements and we have to accommodate for everybody. So that uh, provided, uh, provided a very a complex negotiations, a very complex environment to negotiate with. And adding on that, the regional interference from Iran, Syria, Saudi Arabia, and the United States, which tried to influence Iraqis into this direction or that. Simon Tezel, how, how do you see this? Do you see this as uh, an internal problem that can be resolved by the Iraqis? Why do you think the Saudi Arabians, having watched from the sidelines for so long, and now getting involved? Well, I've got no evidence to support this statement, but I suspect that we've seen for months now the United States pushing very hard, pressing all the main Iraqi parties to form some kind of consensus or bring some sort of government together. Um, Joe Biden's visit was mentioned. There's been other senior American officials in and out of Baghdad ever since the March elections. Uh, are you suggesting this is at the behest of the American administration? I'm getting to that. They seem to they seem to have not had any success. Now Saudi Arabia is a very important regional ally of the United States. It's seen as a pro-Western regime. It's not beyond the realms of possibility that the Americans have said to the Saudis, "Okay, well we we can't do it, so you have a go." Um, but unfortunately, as has been suggested by previous speakers, Saudi Arabia can hardly be seen as a as a totally honest broker in this in this matter as, a, as an impartial mediator because it has several clear national interests in the outcome of government negotiations inside Iraq. That is also true of the other main regional players. Iran's been mentioned. Turkey also has an interest in what happens there. Syria too, and so on. So it's very difficult for any outside country to come in and say, well, we are, uh, we are neutral in this matter. We will try and do, give you our good offices to produce a, a, a fair result for everybody. There will always be suspicion that they are pursuing national agendas. How about the United Nations then? It's got a presence on the ground. It's got a special representative of the Secretary General inside Iraq. If there is the need for a neutral broker, should the United Nations be the ones to spearhead such mediation efforts? Indeed, that is an obvious thought that the United Nations, for all its failings, is in the end ostensibly an impartial organization that has had a lot of experience in similar situations. It has got a presence on the ground has got a lot of experience in Iraq, and it may be that that, that that is the way to go. But I think I would prefer to return to my original point, which is that this is an Iraqi problem which should be sorted out by Iraqis. And I don't quite see why 
it's taking so long. Uh, other countries have very complex electoral maps and demographics and so on. There are minority groups and whose interests have to be served, but they don't take seven months to put together an administration. Well, meanwhile, uh, the incumbent Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki recently ended a whistle-stop tour trying to drum up support among neighbours and ultimately keep his job. That's despite his bloc coming in close second place. He started off with Syria on October 13th, trying to bridge divisions there. Four days later, he was in the Jordanian capital meeting King Abdullah. That was followed by Iran, where it's thought he met the Sadrist leader Muqtada al-Sadr, another key player who's offered his support to Maliki. And then on to Egypt and Turkey in the space of 48 hours. These uh, key regional players have all called for a swift resolution to the crisis. Saudi Arabia is, of course, bidding itself as the next in line to help broker a deal. So ultimately then, Saad al-Muttalibi, will this hinder or help? There is the need for some kind of movement uh, on the, the political front in Iraq. Could that still help? I mean, I wish that Saudi Arabians were as decent as the other regional countries and would have extended an invitation to Mr. Maliki to visit Saudi Arabia as the Prime Minister of Iraq. Uh, until this moment, they refused to send him an invitation. Therefore, we don't see them. I personally, and this is a personal comment, I don't see them as impartial. I see them with a very strong political agenda. I see them with a, a thick red line against Mr. Maliki. So I don't think that uh, people will take their initiative very seriously. Uh, it could be, as Simon said, it could be an American cue for them to try their luck. Uh, but I would like to very much assure you that tonight's meeting, uh, the date of the next par the meet par parliament meeting will be set tonight. And that will be the start, uh, the rolling start of the formation of the government, because the, when the parliament meet, they will elect a speaker for the parliament and then elect a president. And the president will ask the largest political bloc in the part in the parliament to nominate and form a government. Uh, Mohanad al Bayati, so I think then, does this are argument? Let, very much let me put this argument to Mohanad al Bayati. Does this undermine then the credibility of the Saudi initiative that it's all designed to undercut the influence and the position of Nouri al Maliki? Yeah, let me say that uh, Mr. Nouri al Maliki and the political party. Um, uh, state of law, they re will reject any steps of movement which could be uh, reach uh, or or be across uh, the the rule that they want to play in Iraq. As Iraqi, uh, we are cannot accept to repeat the four years uh, that we that uh, we spend it in 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 suffering all all, all kinds of files like orphans and widows and detainees and everything in each issue. So they try to, who, who now puts the stick on this reformation of this new government? Is the Iraqi or other political parties or the, the, the official government now in the position on authority try to uh, follow themselves? Why, if they, they have uh, the solution, why they wait for more than seven months till now and they now try to be hairy with it? I think all the issues for the national or international uh, institutes and also the internet, um, maybe WikiLeaks, you have uh, much pressure on these issues, and also another uh, media of around of the world make more than pressure. Uh, first of all, secondly, when the Mr. Maliki make his round movement over all the regional countries, unless Saudi Arabia. I don't know. Till now, uh, Saudi Arabia didn't push for any candidates to prefer to be a uh, governor in Iraq. But Iranian and American, they said announcement clearly that they support Mr. Maliki, even he did get the second list in the elections in Iraq. This is when we have talk about the policies, our democracy policies in Iraq. There is something wrong. We cannot build uh, a fundamental issues in Iraq for democracy that we will be suffering the next time or next few decades. So uh, now we are in the front of a dark tunnel if we can 
reach a real, a real or, or a capable solutions for the Iraqis from all the uh, political parties. They have to concessions from their high level demands until they reach a, a capable solutions. And uh, if they want to go, so why they are waiting for the long time to get the majority in the parliament and they have to go there at, the, at that time. This so is what uh, uh, the real problem in Iraq. Well, beyond the Beyond the long-term effects that this may have, the interference, uh, the mediation of an outside power, Simon Tizzel, beyond the political considerations as well in the region, does it seem absurd to you at all to have the king of an absolute monarchy, Saudi Arabia, trying to bring a successful outcome to an electoral process? After all, where is Saudi Arabia's experience with party politics? Well, I agree with you. That is an oddity. Um, Saudi Arabia is not w known for its democracy. There have been very limited, very cautious experiments with representation in that country. But really, it's far behind many parts of the region, let alone the rest of the world. So what, quite what the Saudi king brings to the table in terms of uh, democratic solutions is, is, not, is not entirely clear. I do, I do adhere to my earlier suggestion that um, maybe yeah, the Saudis are acting with, uh, with Western um, support and backing uh, behind the scenes. Um, but I don't quite see that this uh, initiative is going to go anywhere, um, whether or not there's a, a, a successful meeting this evening. W one thought, though, listening to your speakers, is that um, although much is made in the West of the of Iranian meddling and interference in, in Iraq, and of course it has been considerable and nefarious in some many instances, What's remarkable about what's happened in the last seven months is that the Iranians have not succeeded in getting what they wanted. Um, you would have thought it would have been possible, given all the people and money and resources and pressure and visits they poured into Iraq in the past seven months with Ahmadinejad and so on, that they could have put together a coherent Shia, pro-Tehran Shia alliance, which would, would run that country. But in fact, they've been thwarted in that. And it's very interesting that they haven't got their own way. It says something about the possible exaggeration of Iranian influence or possibly the resilience of the Iraqi people resisting outside interference of that kind. Uh, Saad al-Mutalabi then, if, if these efforts uh, do not amount to very much, if the Iraqis themselves aren't able to bring this to a successful close, what is the solution? There is clearly a constitutional crisis. What's the way forward? New elections perhaps? I don't think so. I don't think we'll get as far as that. Uh, that is one solution, but it will not go as far as that because uh, I feel, I mean, I know I'm talking to people and I see a real political will uh, to go ahead and form the government. Uh, we have to remember the seven months uh, there was a, a, a war, uh, a regional conflict fought in Iraq uh, on policies, not by guns. Uh, regional countries and regional powers try to influence parties and influence uh, their own form of or image of government that they were uh, hoping to achieve in Baghdad. And I believe, uh, I, I do agree with Simon again, that uh, <clears throat> uh, the, the, the Iranians have definitely uh, lost a great deal of their influence. They couldn't uh, reach their, what they wanted. There was a list of things they failed on, from the closed list to uh, election, a number of issues Sadl from uh, having the Shiites in one political party. I'm afraid yeah, we're so going to have to I, I think it. we, I think we are going ahead uh, soonest. Yeah. Well, thank you very much to all of our guests in Baghdad. That was Saad Al Muttalibi in Amman, Muhannad Al Bayati, and in London, Simon Tisdall. And thank you so much for joining us here on this edition of Inside Story. We, of course, welcome your comments and your suggestions. You can email them to us at insidestory at aljazeera.net. Thanks for watching.